Hey boys and girls, today's video, car upholstery cleaning. The problem with car upholstery cleaning is that there's so many materials that you will find inside your car. For example, I'm gonna be working on a seat today and this is, uh, thank you, because this is Sean, who is my camera guy today, Sean of Blue Tech Mobile Detailing. You can check out his YouTube channel also under Blue Tech Mobile Detailing. So it's his wife's car. She's got a stain, whatever that means to you. She's got some dirt, unwanted dirt on her seat. The problem is, is like I just illustrated, is that the interior of any car is gonna be made up of so many materials from cloth, velour, leather, synthetic leather, vinyl, rubber, plastics. It gets overwhelming very quickly. So on these seats, which I'll bring you in momentarily, we have a combination of vinyl, plastic, whatever you wanna call it, as well as uh, cloth seating. Now, the difficulty with this seating is that it's synthetic material. It's kind of like seat belt material, which is one of the worst materials to try to clean. But nonetheless, we're going to show you how I would attempt to clean it first, and we're going to see what kind of results that I can produce. And here we have our lovely seat. As you can see in the middle, we have cloth. Right in the middle here, we have our stain. Here we have our vinyl. Let me pull you in and highlight that staining towards the middle. What you do need to know is that liquid spills is very different to deal with and clean up versus just dirt that accumulates from the surface downward. I'm not sure if that description makes sense to you, but just know liquid spills are different. I'm uncertain if this is a true liquid spill. I'm guessing it's not, but I don't know yet. Let's see what Darren can do with this stain and cleaning up this seat itself. Let me line up my tools that I'm going to use in attempting to clean this. Really, it's up to you as to the type of brush, type of scrub pad that you pick. It's all based on you responding to your particular situations. Now, if I was gonna do this professionally, I would pre-vacuum this, even though this is mostly a very solid surface, meaning there's not a bunch of nap like carpeting, there's still gonna be some dry debris down in these seams and you wanna get that first before you shampoo because once, there, I just brushed it out. Once you introduce liquid to dry, loose debris, it becomes this kind of soupy, gross mess. So you pre-vacuum first, but because this doesn't have a whole lot of fibers to it, I know that pre-vacuuming is not going to accomplish a whole lot in this particular moment. As much as I am a fan of pre-vacuuming, trust me, I'm a fan of it. So, my solution, my all-purpose cleaner, which is what this is, this is my go-to currently. It's simple green, diluted down, 10 to one. One part concentrate mixed with 10 parts, 10 equal parts of water. So if you were to pre-vacuum, what you would be doing is busting out the, the vacuum, scrubbing this area first, breaking up the loose material and sucking it up with the vacuum. We're gonna ditch that part for the sake of the video. So I'm going to spray. Now when you clean a section like this or an area of your car like that, you want to create a uniform appearance. So if you're gonna go in heavy in one single area like that, you see how it just created a dark spot? So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I actually get the entire area wet with the cleaner. Never mind that it all needs to be cleaned anyways. And because this is two different materials, I'm gonna tack it with two different types of scrub pads. This scrub pad is a non-abrasive, typical scrub pad. It's very good because it, it, it shapes to the contours of the seating and it's ideal for vinyl cleaning. So if I clean these side bolsters like this, and I always use a microfiber cloth and I mop up the dirt with that. And you can see that not much dirt actually came up with that. But this was our main area concern and because it's got a subtle form of fibrous material to it, I'm gonna come in with this type of scrub pad, which is a nylon uh, scrub brush, not too stiff, not too soft. It's that winning balance that only you can figure out. 
You can find this on my website. There's always going to be links below the video that will take you to my dedicated pages so you can get these exact products and tools yourself. It's unlikely it's going to show because it's not pulling up uh, an immense amount of dirt, but nonetheless, there is some dirt on this cloth. So, because I want to create a uniform appearance, that is why I apply my cleaning solution to the entire seating area. Because what could happen is if you just spot treat it and you use too much liquid in that moment, what will happen is it will take some of that dirt and it will spread it out and it's what's called wicking. It will wick out to other areas and it will create a uh, water ring around it. So you don't want to do that. You want to spray the whole area. You don't want to go level 10 and oversaturate it. Just know that as a rule, light repeated applications until you've achieved desired results is the way to go. So you, you do your one test, you shampoo it, you mop it up, you check your results. Now part of the problem with shampooing specifically materials like this is what's called drying time. Because what will happen is you think that you have complete clean, but yet it dries and it reveals that stain or it reveals some things that were hidden because when you get materials wet, generally what happens is they darken up. So I know that this kind of darkened up. It looks very clean right now, but experience dictates me, dictates to me that I still want to go in for another repeat application. So I do a light dusting with my cleaner. I grab my scrub pad again, or scrub brush again. So based on what I'm seeing here, and you can see once again, and not a whole lot of dirt is being pulled up. So I could sit here and repeat that over and over again, and it's going to, it's going to continue to pull up more and more dirt. Really, we just have to accept the nature of the beast is you're never going to get this porous material a hundred percent dirt free. It's just not going to happen. Now there's ways to get it more dirt free but 100% dirt free, as in brand new, it's just never gonna happen. You have to maintain realistic expectations. A couple of things I want to make mention of is you never, that's one of my rules that I broke on camera, which is setting your cleaning solution in the bottle on any type of material that could possibly create some unwanted effect. And what I mean by that is this. The bottom of the bottle will often have dirt because you're sitting it in different areas, whether it's outside of the car, your, your carry bucket, whatever. So not only will there be maybe some solution on the bottom in the form of dirt, uh, let's say you tip the bottle like this and now it's dripping, it's slowly dripping onto the material. So that's just one of my rules is you never leave your bottle sitting on some type of material that you are concerned with. My rule is I'm gonna sit it on the floor of the car somewhere else. I don't sit it on leather. Like you can even have a bottle that's so chewed up on the bottom that you can set it on leather and it will actually leave some skid marks, permanent skid marks as in permanent damage on the leather if you're not careful. Mostly it has to do with leaking bottles. You may not know that your bottle is leaking uh, when it gets hot, it'll build up pressure in here. It'll start dripping down the sides. You don't know about it. So it will collect some solution, cleaning solution down here. You may have dropped your bottle and not known that you've created a little crack in the bottom. It's goes, so it's got this very subtle leak to it. Once again, it's just risk mitigation. So don't set your bottles on your upholstery when you're cleaning it. So I deliberately broke that rule, and I'm sure in some of my videos or other videos you can see me breaking my own rule, but that's my word of caution to you. So now we're just gonna let this dry. 
and that's also if you're a professional detailer, you have to compensate for dry time, which is why one of my rules is I'm gonna start with the driver's seat first so that that will allow the most amount of dry time as I'm doing the rest of the detailing process. So cleaning, upholstery, virtually cleaning anything specifically on the inside of the car is gonna be reduced down to those steps. Pre-vacuuming, picking your choice of tools, always default to a microfiber cloth for two reasons, highly absorbent and it leaves no lint behind. You've got your choice of cleaning solution. For me, it's simple green currently. So you apply a light coat, you scrub, you mop, mop up, check your results, and you go in repeated light applications until you have desired results. And then if the material needs some time to dry, you allow it to dry so that you can see exactly what the finished results are going to be once the material has dried completely. With that said, by all means, leave any comments below. I know this seat is kind of unique in that it has two types of material, but when it comes to auto detailing at a professional level, or you as a car owner, you're gonna be faced with unique challenges. Every car truly is different and unique, and you're just gonna to have to take these tips, uh, gather as many tips along the way, and apply them to your world as you see appropriately. With that said, I will see you on the next video. And don't forget to leave your comments below and let me know some of the challenges that you have faced as a car owner or as a professional detailer in dealing with this type of fabric, seats that uh, are made up of multiple materials, or just that simple rule of never leaving your bottle on a material because of unwanted damage. I would love to hear those horror stories because unfortunately, 20 plus years ago, I had to learn the hard way. It wasn't too hard, but nonetheless, I had to learn in a difficult way. I'm trying to help you guys avoid that. Okay, with that said, till the next video.